Folks, before I get started, I want to give you a little word of caution. Electricity is dangerous. I mean, three-phase electricity in these voltages doesn't take but a second, you're dead. Heck, I had a fellow firefighter about 25 years ago who was working second job as a uh, air conditioner technician. Went up into an attic. He never came back. Well, without our help. Electricity will kill you. And at the very least, you could end up looking like this. That ought to be enough warning for anyone. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, please, please find a machine rebuilder, uh, a technician, uh, an electrician to come help you. Just be careful. Now this is a machine that is currently set up to run on 440. And I tested it at that when it first came into the shop. Now I'm lucky, I'm out here in the country. I have to make my own three phase from the phase converters. And I can step up the voltage to 440 with a, see over there, see on the wall over here. This is a transformer that converts 220 to 440 three phase. I don't like using it because then I'd have to have one everywhere I had a 440 machine. So if I can, I switch over these machines to 220. Now this one has a coolant pump, three phase. It has a transformer in it that three phase that needs to be worked on. It has heaters that need to be looked at. It has a main motor, three phase, and a table motor, three phase. So that's what, four or five things we have to check to convert it over. And not all machines can be converted. Some of them, they're only wired one way. Now this one kind of gave me a surprise because I put a replacement motor on it. And when I was deciding what I wanted to do and looking at all the, the data tags, sure, no problem. Well, I found a problem. I also found what the numbskulls that converted did. Uh, they did something I consider immoral and downright dangerous. I'll show it to you a little later on in the video. Now this is kind of a combination of two days. Uh, as I was trying to make a video out of the other one, I realized that you people that like TikTok weren't going to be happy. Because I went into great detail to stress the importance of what I was doing and how each motor that is on this machine is a different type. Um, basically, for the TikTokers out there, you have to change the wiring in each motor. And there's different ways of doing that. You have to figure out which wires need to go where. This motor was the original motor and has nine leads coming out of it. If you have nine leads, you're just about guaranteed success. Uh, the table motor is the same, only it's not as well marked. The top motor was a big surprise. And I'll show it to you later on. It's totally different than what the nameplate said. And then we get to the heaters. Folks, heaters are sort of like circuit breakers. You need to have the correct size heater in this machine for the motor or else it's useless. These people that converted this over converted it from the 220 machine. Uh, I found a, a data tag on there on the back panel that says it was 220. They left that without covering it up they slapped a couple stickers on it and said, okay, we're good. They didn't change the heaters. Basically, the heaters are twice as large as they should be for each motor. It'll work that way, but you've lost all your protection for higher uh, draw. <laughs> Lucky for me, they didn't change them because now I don't have to go buy the new ones and track them down but I'd rather it have been the other way around. Okay, 
I'm going to intersperse this video with frames of me doing the actual work just to try to make it a little bit more coherent because as I was first filming it, I was talking and doing it as I was going. Uh, some of those I'll use in their entirety, some of them I'll TikTok, but you can change it 440 to 220 under most circumstances if the motors will allow it. This motor has, well, let me see if I can get you down in there. This is going to be kind of the, the basic primer on the motor there. If you can see here, it's got these wires coming out. Some of these wires have little white tags on them. Those are tags that I put on. Most every one of them has a brass tag. And this is great if you can find them on there. This one says number three. So I know this is the wire three of this motor. And if you look over here, this is a data plate that tells me which wire should be connected for either high 440 or low 220. Now, I know this wasn't connected to 220 when I took it apart because if it was, there would be groups of three wires connected to each other. If you look in there and you only see two wires connected to each other like this, then it's running on the high because the high you'd have like four and seven, eight and five, nine and six tied together. And then your incoming, your line one would go to one, line two would go to two, line three would go to three. So every set in there would be two. If you see three together, that's running on 220. But check them. The data plate here tells me the amperage. It tells me the voltage. And this motor here can be run at uh, 208, 220, or 440. Now they lump in the amperages for 208 and 220 together. So over here under the amp it says 6.4 and then 3.2. One of the advantages of running on 440 is the wire size can go down because instead of pulling 6 amps for this motor, we're pulling 3 amps. What else can I tell you? Now, this motor was different. It's got a plate here that tells me the same exact thing on it. The pecker head, that's what the box that the wires are installed in called a pecker head, is down here. And this one did not have any brass tags, I believe. The third motor we have to worry about is up there on the head. And that is a replacement motor that said on the tag that it was a uh, 208, 220, 440 motor, which I'm saying, great, it can be changed. Well, when I got into it, I found that some of it had been in that motor and rewound it. And it could either be only a 220 or a 440 because it only had three wires coming out of the pecker head. Don shows up a little bit later in this video and he'll help us figure out what we're going to do with those three wires. Did I tell you Don's an electrical engineer? I know, I know how he did it. I don't know. Now, the fourth, or excuse me, the third motor is this little gusher pump right down here. And this one was the hardest to work on because its pecker head is very thin. You take off this covers and the wires come out here. And they were labeled atrociously. I finally found some markings that were on the wires. And got everything sorted out that way. Well, now we're going into the control panel where you have to change a few things up in here. I love these old machines. Everything's laid out nice and numbered. In fact, most of them come with a blueprint, but sadly the blueprint's gone on this one. A lot of times they're on the back of a door. But it's just basic wiring. This is a switch that 
disconnects everything before you can remove the panel. And when you're working on them, you can turn that back on. In fact, you have to, to be able to energize the whole system. Down here is another item you have to change. This is a transformer. It can take either 220 or 440 input, and it transforms to 110 to control all the connectors, or contactor. These are all heaters. In this machine, they only have two heaters per motor, not the three like a modern one does. Here's also a heater here and a heater there. So we have three sets of heaters that have to be changed. And like I said, you can read this number here. These are General Electric heaters and there's a listing on the internet for the uh, chart that you can read to figure out what those are and what they need to be. Finally, finally, we get rid of that. We don't even need that either. Down here, it says clearly that this was a 220 three phase. Now it is again. But for a long time, it has not been. It's been a very unsafe 440. Well, that's it for the Cliff Note version. I know there's not much information there, so stay tuned for some more detailed in the next part of this video. And Don's coming. We're back to another what the hell did they do moment. By looking at the data plates on each motor and then looking at the heater values on the heaters that are installed, I can tell which motor is which. They all use different amperages. Uh, you know, the little one-tenth horsepower motor, it goes down to uh, uh, 0.7 amps. So just by cross-referencing and using my state-of-the-art deduction method, an old lunch plate, I was able to tell the pump, the table, and the motor, and look up the values of these heaters that are in here, and I could tell they didn't change the damn heaters. You can run a machine that is designed for 220, or, or set up for 220, on 440 without changing the heaters. You can't do it the other way. You can't take a 440 heater size and run 220 to it. Mainly because you double the amps roughly. Well, these pecker heads went in there and said, ah, oh, this is easy. They went and they changed the wiring on all three motors, but they didn't change the heaters. They saved maybe about $60, but they run a really big risk of burning up their motors. Don't do that. And that's how I know they were pecker heads. Now with all that said, it's good for me. It's already has the heaters for 220. I don't have to track them down. Uh, they're not that hard to find. I mean, they're all over eBay, used ones even, uh, new ones, uh, and they just two screws and change out. But if you buy an old machine, check your heaters. Make sure they're the right size. Now, on to the second problem. Figuring out which way to run your motor wires. As you saw on the other two motors that they were... Um, uh, had little brass tags on them. Uh, a lot of them, uh, you get nine wires. They're all the same color. And you don't know which they are, so you got to do a little more detective work. In fact, we got a motor on a 16 last summer that uh, I think a forklift scraped off 
And Don and I spent three nights trying to figure out which one goes where. And we finally found a good method to do it. There's some videos on that. Uh, well, I'm down to three wires, guys. I don't have a long enough arm to reach around the front. Don said he'd come help me, but he hadn't showed up yet. Wait a minute, I hear a car. Maybe that's him. I got Steve! It. Hey, where are you at, Steve? Come on in, Don! Steve! Don, get your ass in here and hold me. Or help me. You're not going to hold me. If you hold me, I'm going to be hey. mad. Probably got COVID and everything else okay. to give to me. Come on in. I can't help. What do you mean you can't? What do you mean you can't? Well, is that my fault? It's your stuff. Look, I gave you your shirt. I gave you your way to talk to me. And now you're bitching because you don't have any arms. Like you were asking me to hold something. I can't hold anything without arms. Well, what good are you then? Simple physics. I'm here mentally and spiritually. You're mentally. Oh. You're just here to drive. I'm at mental, me. all right. Yeah, you are. I can, yeah, that too. <laughs> Do you see what I've done? I've got all this together. Now we've just got to figure out three more wires and I'll be happy. Now. It's because a, the three you. Three wires are T1, T2, and T3. Right. But I know how to figure that one out because we wired it when we took the other one off. Now, so, so T1 goes in terminal number two on that switch. Okay, well, one, two, and three. Number one is up there. Um, one should go to uh, the. Oh, either. crap. Don, we, we didn't keep the same numbers. Let me go get a meeting. Doesn't, doesn't, okay. Why don't you talk to the people while, you're go while I'm gone? Yeah. And no dirty That's jokes. Yeah. Got to talk about you, Steve, behind your back. Now we're just trying to get this tool master finished. This is the last step. And I think Steve's got everything else working on it. The only thing left is to wire up this motor. And uh, maybe tonight we'll get to see if it either smokes or runs. So that should be interesting. I've got the schematic here. And, and we'll try and figure this out. And that's all we can do. Hope for the best. Should be straightforward to wire it up, though. Steve is taking a long time. You just gotta go right in the other room. Of course, if you've ever been in Steve's shop, you'll understand why you can't find anything. Anyways, I've got a new project, too, coming up that Steve's already videoed. It's Don't you tell him about that new project. Don't you tell him about the new project. I just said it's project. a new project. Good. Hey, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to convey anticipation, you know. Oh. I didn't tell him what it was. Anyway. <laughs> We're pitiful, you know that. Okay. You need, we need to, is, is, is anything hooked to terminal one? 